Hello! In the last video we installed an IDE hard drive in my Amstrad PC1640. Since then I've added a compact flash slot so I can easily transfer stuff between it and my laptop, but that's not what I wanted to cover in this video. No, in this video I'm going to take a deep dive into the graphics capabilities of this PC, which is actually a more interesting topic than it sounds. Now the earlier Amstrad PC1512 model was available with either a monochrome monitor or a colour one, but no matter which model you chose, the graphics card always emulated an IBM colour graphics adapter, or CGA. This means that the higher resolution text that you'd normally get with the IBM monochrome display adapter or MDA just wasn't available on the 1512. However, thanks to the inclusion of a graphics chipset from Paradise Systems, the PC1640 was available with a much wider variety of display options. As well as the standard CGA monitor, it could be purchased with a monochrome monitor that supported the higher resolution of the IBM MDA. There was even an enhanced colour model that supported the IBM EGA display modes. No matter which monitor you bought with your PC1640 though, the base unit was capable of being switched between any of these modes. In this video, I'm going to investigate how some of these modes work, and find software that takes advantage of them. For testing purposes, I'm going to need some software, namely SimCity, Monkey Island, Lemmings, Planet X3, Rambo, Iron Man Super Offroad, and PC Paintbrush. I chose these because they all support a very wide range of graphics modes, including some of the really weird ones that this PC has. PC Paintbrush is especially notorious for supporting pretty much every oddball graphics adapter that it was possible to connect to a PC. Now, my PC1640 comes with a monochrome monitor, but that's not such a bad thing. As well as having the highest quality text mode as we discussed, it also emulates a Hercules graphics adapter that gives it the highest resolution graphics mode of any PC in this era at 720 by 348 pixels, even higher than Macintosh's of the time. The Hercules configuration especially suits things like word processing, desktop publishing, and any other application where detail is more important than color. PC Paintbrush particularly benefits from this, and lets you do some very detailed illustrations. There were a few games that made really good use of the Hercules adapter too, such as SimCity, which normally has quite a cluttered interface and so really benefits from the high resolution. Planet X3 plays just fine too, using a scaled version of the monochrome CGA artwork. There were also a few games that had limited but functional support for it, such as Monkey Island, which doesn't look fantastic but it's still very playable. Rambo 3 is another game that clearly wasn't designed with Hercules in mind, and its renderings of Sylvester Stallone are deeply unsettling. Just quickly, we'll talk about the signals involved in monochrome video. Obviously there's only one colour, white, so we only need one digital video signal. But in text mode, the graphics card can vary the intensity of the colour to give different shades of grey, as you can see from this screenshot of DOS shell, so we need an additional signal to specify that. The combination of these two signals gives us four different signal levels, or four different shades of grey to choose from. Anyway, let's try running the PC in CGA mode. This is done by adjusting some dip switches next to the monitor port, I've put a sticker on the back of my PC to remind me. Obviously we can't use the monochrome monitor for CGA, and I don't have a CGA monitor. The signal timings of the CGA are pretty bog standard, so I could probably build an adapter to connect it to one of the RGB monitors in my collection, but I want to take this opportunity to investigate this converter board that takes RGB signals and converts them to display on a standard VGA monitor. The board is available on eBay very cheaply, and is called the GBS8220 or GBS8200 depending on how many monitor outputs it has. These boards were developed for arcade operators to retrofit modern monitors into games cabinets, but they're also very popular among retro enthusiasts because they're compatible with a wide variety of classic computers and games consoles. So let's talk about CGA signals. They work very similar to monochrome video in that they're digital and have a separate intensity signal, but because we now only have three colours, red, green and blue, we have three video signals instead of one. There is only one intensity signal for the three colours, and when set it just brightens everything up. This results in a total of 16 different possible colours. Unfortunately, only four of these colours can be on screen at once in graphics mode, and even worse you have to choose from four rather garish predefined palettes. CGA really was rather crap compared to the graphics capabilities of even cheap home computers of the time such as the ZX Spectrum. Anyway, how do we go about connecting the PC to the GBS? Well, to start with, I just naively hooked up the ground, red, green, blue, and horizontal and vertical sync signals from the PC up to the equivalent pins on the GBS's input port. Funnily enough, I still have to have the CRT monitor connected because the PC's power supply is in the monitor. This didn't work at all. It seems that the GBS needs the horizontal and vertical sync signals combined into one composite sync signal. According to the internet, the function to combine them is exclusive NOR, which is basically an exclusive OR gate with an inverter in front of it, but I didn't have any XNOR ICs lying about. I've seen people on the internet use separate XOR and inverter chips to achieve this, but that just seems wasteful, so I assembled an XNOR function from a single NOR gate IC on a prototyping board and connected it between the PC and the GBS. As you can see from this scope trace, it combines the vertical and horizontal signals together. 
this worked great. The GBS displayed the PC's boot up messages, and then MS-DOS started as expected. Firing up Monkey Island displayed the title screen in, well, some colours, and everything seemed to be working perfectly. I'm not sure this is much better than the Hercules version, but at least it's slightly more colourful, although not much to be honest. I was pretty happy with this, but unfortunately there was a problem. As this CGA test program shows, we're not getting all the colours we're supposed to. This is because we're not taking into account the intensity signal. Most games don't make use of intensity, but text mode apps certainly do. Paku Paku is a good example. Despite looking graphical, it actually runs in a very hacked text mode, and this lets it use the entire palette of colours at once. It looks good, but on comparing it to screenshots on the internet, we can see that it's missing a few colours. Now the GBS only has inputs for red, green and blue signals, it doesn't have an intensity input. This is because the GBS input is analog, whereas the GBA output is digital, so we need to build a primitive digital to analog converter. We can do this using a simple resistor network like this. This will mix the intensity signal with each colour signal, and allow for 16 different colours instead of the 8 allowed by the 3 colour signals alone. I built the resistor network on a prototyping board and connected it between the PC and the GBS. This worked beautifully, and now the colour test program displays in all 16 colours. However, this reveals one more problem. The colour labelled brown is instead of sort of dark yellow. This is because of a quirk of CGA monitors. You see, the signal combination for dark yellow is to have red and green switched on, with the blue and intensity signals off. CGA monitors look for this combination of signals, and if they see it, they drop the level of green in the signal to make the colour more brown than yellow. This may be because earlier IBM terminals had a brown colour in their palette, and IBM wanted cross-compatibility. So how do we deal with this? Well, we need a circuit that looks for that combination of signals, and drops the green level when it sees it. So I used a magnitude comparator IC, the 4585, set to look for that combination, and then connected that up via an inverter and a resistor to the green signal. This pulls the green signal voltage slightly lower when it sees the dark yellow signal. As you can see from this test page, it works pretty well, although the ICs I used have a bit of propagation delay, so the brown effect is a bit shifted. It's good enough for now though. We can now run Paku Paku with all the colours enabled, and doesn't it look great with 16 colours at once? Let's explore the CGA graphics modes using PC Paintbrush, which as I said earlier supports every weird graphics mode under the sun. We'll start with the standard ones. There's the 4 colour 320x200 mode that Monkey Island ran in earlier, and we can switch between the four possible palettes, although none of them are particularly conducive to great art. There's also the black and white high resolution 640x200 mode, which is better for detailed graphics, but still nowhere near as good as the Hercules mode we explored earlier. The PC1640 also supports the so-called Plantronics modes, which simulate an obscure CGA-compatible graphics card called the Plantronics Color Plus. This allows applications to display all 16 colours at once in 320x200, as demonstrated here, or the standard horrible CGA 4 colour palettes, but in the higher resolution 640x200 mode, which could previously only be black and white on standard CGA cards. Let's test some more games. Lemmings looks quite nice, and actually displays in the so-called unofficial Mode 5 palette, which is enabled by tweaking some configuration registers. Weirdly, this doesn't happen in DOSBox or in any other screenshots of CGA Lemmings I've found on the net. If you know what's going on here, let me know. SimCity runs in the higher resolution 640x200 mode, and looks somewhat similar to the Hercules mode, but with effectively half the vertical resolution, so it doesn't look quite as good. Rambo 3 plays just fine, although Sly looks if anything even more terrifying than he did in the Hercules version. It also has a monochrome CGA version, which is just a scaled version of the Hercules mode. I also tested another game called Iron Man Super Offroad, which didn't have a Hercules version so I couldn't test it earlier, but it does a much better job of rendering Ivan Stewart than Rambo did with its title character. Planet X3 has several CGA compatible modes. We can't use the CGA composite mode because this PC doesn't have a composite output. The standard 4 colour mode looks great, as this game was specifically designed with this mode in mind, and even supports switching between all the different palettes. It also supports the higher resolution black and white CGA mode, which is similar to the Hercules mode we looked at earlier. And most impressively, it's possibly the only game ever released to support the Plantronic 16 colour mode, and doesn't that look lovely and colourful? However, for truly colourful graphics, we'll have to move on to the EGA modes of the PC. Stay tuned for the next episode where we'll investigate these modes and maybe some other stuff. Subscribe and hit the notification button if you want to see that. Goodbye!